Welcome. Just I put an agenda item for the uh, one one plans for galley uh, based on the new Istio one one plan. So Istio one one is going to ship sometime in January. Uh, so and I think it's like a big three month delay for the debut of galley. I think we can do more work within Galley, both in terms of productionization, you know, making it more stable, uh, as well as adding features that might be missing. So I think we're going to have a discussion about this in the TOC meeting tomorrow. Uh, I think the the primary outcome or the primary thing that we want is to enable Galley by default. So that will be the primary mechanism. And I think what we want to push for is actually start maybe doing the um, service discovery implemented in Galley as well, like the, the endpoint ingestion to be implemented in Galley as well, but we can possibly make it alpha. So uh, is there any thoughts, comments on that? We'll have knobs for all these. So it'll be a, a, a bit. So we have a, 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 a flip to use MCP, mm -hmm. and most of the time it's for pilot and mixture, right? So Galilee could be stood up and it could serve all sorts of, it could serve endpoints, it can serve config, if nobody consumes it, it's much less risk. It's actually what we're doing today. Even if you turn off MCP, you have the helm option, Galilee's still there ready to serve traffic because somebody asked for it. Um, so really the, what we're talking about is, is a, a, a set of bits for pilot, a set of bits for mixture to say what configuration they want to get from Galilee and what they want to get from Kubernetes. So if we have those bits in place and we have it dimensioned properly, um, so we just use your config and endpoints as the two bits for pilot and maybe make sure it's just a single, single bit. So what's there now in those components? That they can already read from they can, they get They can get config. They can't get endpoints. And okay. it's and it's a single bit for pilot and mixer. Exposed to Helm. Yeah. Obviously you can go down and you, you can customize that and say I want mixer to get from Kubernetes and pilot to get from Galley. But as long as we have the right level of bits exposed Okay. And we can say these are the defaults, yeah. and with some recommendations about if we want to turn them off based on your particular deployment. Okay, so the TLDR of this is we need two bits, one for MCP, one for uh, endpoint uh, uh, collection. The the MCP one is going to be enabled by default, that's, that's the desire, and the endpoints is going to be disabled by default for the time being. Uh, and those bits are at the helm level. Yeah, there, there might be more than two bits, um, depending on how, what load. So, so the load for user author config is pretty low on Galley. I'm not sure what the load for endpoints will be on Galley if we need to turn that off. Unless we characterize it, we know that Galley is not going to consume an excess amount of resources. Um, sure, but that means the bit is also consumed by Galley, the endpoints bit. Uh, at the top level, it could, it could be the same one. At, at the lower level, you have something for, you have galley specific bits, sure. pilot specific bits, and we aggregate that up. Um, currently yeah. we're using Helm, so we have some, yeah. yeah it could so, be, so if pilot's not reading from the endpoints from galley, then galley doesn't need to collect them. Yeah. That makes sense. Which may, I, I think we have an interesting failure point there where pilot expects what galley doesn't provide, so it needs to be easily diagnosable, but that, that's why, depending on what the migration path is, so we hadn't. One thing when we, if, if we're gonna, if it's gonna be on by default, we need to work out the migration path, the upgrade path. So we, we had originally not been, well, we were not planning to do that because that was not a thing for alpha. Um, if we say it's gonna be beta, then we need to work through that and decide is there one bit or are there two bits. So you roll it out and say with Galley, with all these extra features. Okay, that's stable. Now I'm going to just flip the bit and pilot to start getting from Galway. So it's a more incremental rollout. Sure. So there is there is documentation about in which order these components should be started. Right. Okay. And then do we need to do anything at the Helm site so that there is a, a migration without interruption from 1.0 to 1.1? Yeah, so, so Helm will not, I would not expect Helm to provide any thing support there. for this, right? No, it's going to be just everything goes, hope for the best. 
um, in the future, when this operator that we're planning is developed, then we could have a single bit which says use, mm -hmm. you know, use this feature and there could be some orchestration, um, but we can't rely on that yet. So we, we have to decide whether, um, maybe it's sufficient to just throw everything at the wall and let, let it resolve. Um, I suspect that will be, well, will be disruption in that. Um, I mean, so it depends on how we, we, we upgrade. So if if we set up things properly so that uh, we do a true rolling update with the pilot, the old pilot wouldn't stop until the new ready, new pilot is ready. And if we can say that the new pilot is uh, not ready until it can get endpoint data and user control from Galley, then there, then we might be able to sequence things that way. So that so, so we're still using the old pilot. So the new galley spins up, the old pilot is still serving. And then at some point once the new galley is up and running, new pilot suddenly is ready because it's getting config. And then we can stop the old pilot and all of the proxies are gonna dump onto the new pilot. So how do the, how do the proxies know which pilot to talk to? They don't. How does it work now? Uh, there's just, a, it's DNS. Yeah, so it's, it's we're online in Kubernetes client side load balancing. Yeah, so how do we transition from one to the other? Just uh, update the DNS entry. Thundering herd. Yeah. Okay. It's not updating, it's, it's they, they lose connection, they try to connect again, and if that endpoint is no longer available, uh, Kubernetes will update the IP tables on the on the within the pod and um, they end up That's reconnecting to uh, a valid endpoint, which would be the new pilot. So there's some there's, there's logic in pilot to uh, yeah. to limit this, so they limit the, the connections that are incoming, so they don't uh, all the connections. Everything would connect at once, but they will minimize uh, or spread out the processing that they do for the connections to, to minimize the thunder here. Yeah. Okay. But in general, it seems the upgrade mostly should just work. If, if we get all of the readiness checks in place, we, we have some minimal readiness checks now. The pilot will not, pilot won't indicate that it's ready to Kubernetes, that it's not ready to receive traffic until it gets some indication from Galley. We need to, to verify that we, that, that indication that Galley provides the pilot is sufficient. Oh, okay. I'm confused. So essentially, is the problem, Galley yeah, starts up. Right, it's in the case that it is ready, but uh, we haven't finished reading all the, uh, like the, 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 we haven't finished the full sync yet. Is that the problem? That would, if we, yeah, if we didn't do a full sync, we, we thought we had a complete view of the world and we um, then propagated that to pilot. So pilot was then ready, um, and then you could have a gap. I don't know if that's a real problem, but we need to test it. And, and if it is a problem, then we might, we need to fix it. And that fix might include propagating up the explicit per component bit. Okay. Uh, quality assurance checks. Uh, ensuring uh, really. to pilot works during great. Okay. Um, make it easy to diagnose uh, pilot expecting endpoints. Supplying. Okay. Okay. So, but essentially, this means no incremental. Okay. So we, we don't have any anything else here. No incremental. No additional resources. No configurability. I think we want conf configurability, right? So that we, uh, at the runtime, you want to be able to say, okay, I want these. We want these res additional resources. Uh, is this nice to have or necessary? It's nice to have, right? So, I, I, 
I don't know how much that matters. Because networking is a, is a fairly balanced set. Um, well, I, so I guess the, the, the case would be if somebody's using, if somebody's doing a la carte and they are concerned about introducing new CRDs in their cluster that they're not using, um, how, how, how much do we need to address that for 1.1? One, one? So, okay. Um, we, we, we can. So that would be, I mean, there is an option if, if, that, if that is a small set of people. Um, you, worst case, you could say turn off MCP. And that will be addressed on one, two. Um, so be, if it's a nice to have, we, we can get to it. But I think the um, performance with service discovery is going to be a big one. Because that, if that doesn't work, then we can't. Um, there, there's no mitigate. The, the mitigation for that is to completely turn off MCP for service discovery. Okay. And again, that's just a, a we need to verify at scale. Um, so on pilot and gamut. Should I should we say stretch incremental MCP then if the perf becomes a issue for service discovery? Would it be like, I think that would be too much of a... That would be a stretch. All right. Yeah. Help with uh, service discovery. Okay, uh, how about dial-out mode? I think you want that, right? Dial-out? Like the reverse MCP. Oh, um, I don't think we need that for one one. Do we? I think we are going to... Um, let's see, when is... You can put it as a stretch. Okay, let's do that. Um, we, know, we know we want to do that. I think it's just whether we can get it, we can do it in one one or one two. what the quality level is. So it might be, it might be an alpha thing if we end up supporting both. Okay. Um, what is dial-out mode? Dial-out mode is reversing the direction. Um, so the the use case is today the source of district the source of configuration is the server the destination is the client so that mostly works in Kubernetes but if you wanted to have a uh, more distributed architecture where you have a like a, a hub cluster that's running pilot and galley and spoke clusters that are uh, behind firewalls you need might need to reverse the direction so that uh, the hub can reach the spoke. Mm -hmm. So the, the protocol, the source and destination role stay the same, but the client and server roles are reversed. Okay. I don't know if that, that makes sense. Yes, somewhat. I, I, I don't know the, the, the design of how Galley is built, and this is my first meeting here, uh, and we haven't, um, looked into Galley as yet, so it somewhat makes sense, but uh, not quite. I need to go back, and uh, uh, it's fine. It's fine for now. So, so one thing I think will help with these two stretch goals is I'm working on a doc now, which ex explains the the motivation for those and what uh, design will look like, and it has some sketches for the different uh, alternate topologies. I think that will help um, shed some light on on it. Is, is that available somewhere that I can look uh, at? Not, not yet, no. Um, let's, I think we'll have, I, I can cover some of it maybe in two weeks, uh, next week meeting. I don't know if it'll be, oh. Okay. We can cover some of it anyway. We can introduce what the topologies are and what it looks like and maybe not, might, might not be contentious. Um, okay, yeah. Does that sound good? Yep, great, thank you. Okay, uh, how about MTLS, essentially SDS support? I think that will be a bit a stretch as well. That's not even planned. That SDS, I think, was alpha for one one, and that's just with the proxy. Yeah, okay, I mean, it, so. it's, yeah, I mean, that is a super stretch to, to get that in. Okay. Um, it ultimately depends on, um, 
the security for, to get that in okay. place. So, so I wouldn't take that as a dependency. The summary is, I'm going to actually order these switches. Um, MCP on by default, that will be the highest priority with beta level quality. Uh, service discovery support with alpha level quality off by default, that's the second priority item. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, we need to make sure, ensure that the quality, release quality is in place for these things. And then stretch is the dialog, stretch number one is the dialog mode, and stretch number two is the incremental MCP for service discovery. Yeah, and number two would be, we can, Prioritize that based on the testing. Yeah, additional testing we do. For and now I think that's going to be dr driven by the surface discovery part. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else that we should discuss? Um, we should find out what the when we're doing testing. Make sure we get the the right scale targets. For, for this, um, some of the larger customers. Uh, you mean for the source code, right? For number of services, number of endpoints, and, and the, roughly the number of the types of configuration they're writing per service. Yeah, presume the preferred group has this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I know that Cloud Foundry has done some testing and they've gotten pretty high and they're, they're running into some they're having to play around with uh, gRPC method size right now. Um, so at some point we'll, we'll hit that. Okay. Um, anything else? Any other topics? Um, what was the, I know there's some work that was going into um, generating client libraries. I saw that there was there were some things that you were looking at, and there was some people in the community that were yeah, so, trying to do that from Mast and Mesh. So I'm not sure whether they're actually trying to do this or not. So what I have is I can uh, show it to you guys. Uh, actually, pull requests go present. I don't think it's representing the right place. So the basic idea was um, to to create to to make use of the um, Kubernetes code generator, right? So the idea is we essentially have these options, right? The message options that you can specify in a proto that indicates that that proto is actually a, a CRD, right? So I'm just gonna show an example here, hold on. Um, yeah, you guys have to bear with me. Sorry. There's no hide all button. I don't know why I'm, I'm a little light. Okay, so here is an example. So this is my a test thing that I did. So you can actually specify metadata here that says, oh, like uh, this is a Kubernetes custom resource spec. It's namespace, this is its group, this is its version, this is its kind. And by the way, this is just something very basic. Uh, theoretically speaking, we can actually make it more richer. You know, from the same proto, we can produce multiple different CRD definitions or versions. This was just a like a beginner way of doing that. You know, I was just like, I want to get something started. So uh, from this, uh, the tool actually first generates the a YAML file. Uh, let's see where it is. There was a file view of this, which actually was much better. Okay, right. So this is kind of the YAML file that gets generated. So it's like a, a CRD definition uh, that is very similar to what we have in the repo. The, the one big difference is now we have the validation portion filled up with open API schema-based uh, model, 
right? And it's based on the structure of the protos themselves. So this is gonna come handy when, when we do um, like a versioning or validation at the API server level. It's, it's just something very basic, just does something very just structural. In addition to this, uh, it actually ends up creating uh, this file. Uh, this actually acts as an input to the uh, Kubernetes code generator, right? So we create, oh, oh, there's a basic type that actually has type meta and object meta. And then there's a spec portion, which is essentially the, the actual contents of the, the proto itself here, right? So it's, it's fairly straightforward, fairly basic. And then from here, we can generate the rest of the uh, client library. Um, I mean, uh, this is this is probably something that's gonna take a week or so to comp like you know to run to completion with. It's just that it, it's a matter of time, and you know. Um, well, so I was thinking it was the, I think it was Asmash. Some people there they had their own kind of handcrafted client libraries, and they were dealing with some issues with one ofs and JSON and PD. So if we can. Get, and I think that there's another group that was doing something similar. If we can get this plumb through with a single type, and then maybe try to get them to, um, we, we can all work on the same thing. We can get it pushed into Istio API. Yeah. So my since this seems to be just a matter of cycles to get right. So this is essentially. I mean, this is a prototype. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to run into like many wonderful edge cases as, as we make progress. Um, I was thinking of maybe pushing this into the tools repo and then like, you know, like, like pointing people to this saying that, hey, you know, let's try to work on this, but it's not complete yet. I mean, it's just a very basic prototype. So what, what was the reason for putting in tools repo and not Istio API? Uh, because Istio API is, uses tools. Okay, I was just thinking for quick, if, if we wanted to set, a, Set things up so that people that we all can make quick progress in prototyping and fleshing things out. I mean, we can, I guess, put in the API, but uh, I'm I'm worried about the. Yeah, I don't want tools in the API repo. Yeah, that should just be APIs. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we need to do the basic wiring so that you know you can deal with like you know change code here and then you can do like quick iterations with the rest of the code but it's not this is not even there yet right so this i mean this doesn't handle like enums one offs or or any of the more interesting stuff right yeah um so that's why i think we should start in like a in the tools repo you know write the tests for it and then do the first like battle test on the studio api see if it's gonna work out that would be a great place to actually create a compliance test as well. So, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm. Do we, do we have a? I just would take the the galley one one stuff takes precedence. Yes. So this is a very low priority thread for me at this point. So if somebody wants to pick this up or like you know help with it, that would be great. And I, I can direct it. So like we, we want to add, like we already, Jeff actually on our side is adding proto gen well date, right? Uh, which actually annotates protos with uh, JSON schema like uh, expressions as well. So we can actually directly make them work within the validation code as well. So that, that's my output goal actually. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'll clean this up and put it in the tools repo, and then uh, we should speak to people who, who might be interested in it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Let's look prototype. Anything else? All right. I guess that's it, folks. See you guys in two weeks. <laughs>